But you know, so how do you introduce group homes to special needs of Muslims and you know? Well, we're not sure if it's group homes that we need. Okay. We might but need some something cases, else. There might be a solution though. It could be a solution and that's where, you know, we need to be available and that's what we're hoping becomes very clear to the community through the symposium is that CAMD is available as a resource mm -hmm. to support not only our members of our community but mainstream service providers to become more aware and sensitive to the needs of the Muslim community. Uh, you know, um, as the aging population, as Muslims, uh, immigrants to this country are aging, this issue becomes an issue, you know, yes. and how do we deal with this issue? Well, we really, you know, we need to get beyond the traditional institutions that the Muslim community has been building. It's time for services. Yeah. We really, really, really need to work together and have social services, have long-term supports in place, whether it's for seniors, people with disabilities, just even simple counseling services. Do, do you know of any services that's available for Muslim seniors? People have been talking about them. Uh, people have been starting up some projects. I think uh, Rahma Foundation has mm -hmm. some work that they're doing. Uh, Muslim Welfare Center has been doing some work. But again, I'm not sure if there is an adequate coordinated effort in really um, providing the services that the community needs. Yeah. I want to touch on an important issue you mentioned, and I feel strongly about it. I feel us as Muslims, as a community, has put, been putting a lot of money in building masjids. Mm -hmm. But, and... Uh, you know, and I am totally against this idea because I see, you know, I, I get a lot of invitations mm -hmm. come for, uh, you know, um, uh, to collect money to build yep. this masjid or upgrade this masjid, but there is no services. Yep. There's no services for the seniors, there's no services for the disabled, and there's no service for young people. Mm -hmm. It's all about buying a piece of land and building this Taj Mahal because, <laughs> honestly, that's how yes, I yes, feel. I agree with you. Because this person wants to build his own masjid. He wants yes. to manage this great Taj Mahal, yes. and the services that's required by all these groups are being neglected. And when are we going to do something about it? You know, you, you find them telling you it's good, Allah gives reward for building a masjid, but I would tell you there's much more rewards for uh, doing yes. these services for the Muslims, for the services we need. Well, this is exactly the conversation we've been having with the masajids, is saying, you know what, we don't want to just build another center, and that's why we don't have a physical place. Mm -hmm. We refuse to set up ourselves in some sort of physical space and uh, if, uh, you know, when we can offer those services to the community in existing places. But and that's what we're trying to do is go to the existing masajids and say, you know what, give us space to run these programs. We're willing to run the programs. You help us with resources and help us with the space. So I put this challenge to the existing masjids to give services, to work with you guys to provide this much needed services. Unfortunately, I feel it's a conflict of interest. You go to the masjid to talk about these problems and they tell you we have barely have enough money to uh, operate the masjid, the utilities and then that. Mm -hmm. And once they have money, they want to expand. How many times we see either they want to expand, they, once they pay the mortgage, either they want to buy a new piece of land and build more rather than look at the services. Yes. And honestly, it's tiring because we have to start looking. Most of this mass gets is closed five days, uh, yep. five days a week, yep. or it's open for a night prayer. Mm -hmm. this, and all these expenses for this kind of thing. Well, this, this is exactly why the masjids that we're trying to even work with are the masjids that already have built enough. Mm -hmm. They have nowhere else to build. Yeah. So it's time that they start using the buildings mm -hmm. to offer something rather than having them empty. And you know what, in principle we've had a lot of support. In principle they're starting to see the issues. We have intentionally targeted leaders in the community to whom disability is a very mm -hmm. personal issue. Yeah. And therefore they can't say no to us. Yes. Uh, but it has to expand. It ha we honestly, yes. as a community, we have to wake up and realize there's a lot more services. Prayers are important, yes. but it's part of life. Whatever we do, you know, at work, we work, and then prayer times come, we stop, we pray, and then we go back to work. And that's what the masjid should be, right. a place to provide these services. Yes. And yes, we stop for prayers and carry on. Well, uh, alhamdulillah, I think... Uh, we're starting, you know, I, I think 
we're getting to a pivotal point in our history as, as Muslims in this, in this community around here that there is more and more talk of the same, the talk, the talk that, you know, we need to offer something more. And people are starting to take those initiatives a little bit, step by step, baby know, steps, but they're starting to happen. We've been talking for, for years, and honestly, it's becoming a conflict of interest as I feel they want to collect money mm -hmm. uh, to build more. Mm -hmm. We have to stop the building, and we have to look at services yes. and help a group like yourself to provide the well-needed services. And as we mentioned, uh, the population is aging, mm -hmm. and we have to find the solution. The solution in, in the Western world is old age places, yes. right homes. Yes. And it might be a partial solution. Maybe culturally for us, we like to keep the parents with mm -hmm. us, and maybe that's the right solution. But there are challenges. And how do we face these challenges, and how we find support yes. groups like yours to deal with these challenges. Well, we, we need to have these conversations, and I think we're starting to have them more and more. Like, we're having them around disability issues, that, you know, how do we engage in a dialogue where we can establish, you know, our sort of objectives, things that work for us. We don't have to settle for existing models. Mm -hmm. We can. We can work with existing models and to make them work them for us. For yes, we can modify needs. them. We can also redefine them. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the type of process. That's basically your, you know, participatory community-based action research model mm -hmm. that m most of the mainstream is engaging in in order to have services evolve to really meet the needs of community. That's the model we're trying to apply here mm -hmm. is let's just, you know, constantly be working together. It's not just going to be my idea. Mm -hmm. I want it to be my idea along with everybody else's voice incorporated into that idea so that we really truly meet people's needs not just put up something that we think is right yeah i hope you're going to be dealing with some of these issues in the conference we talked about earlier huh that's that's the objective by the end of the day like in the morning it's the context piece mm -hmm. um we're also actually you know bringing in like i said mainstream service providers and what i yeah. neglected to mention is our keynote speaker um over the lunch hour is the uh Honorable David C. Onley, the Lieutenant mm -hmm. Governor of Ontario. Mm -hmm. He will be our keynote over the lunch hour. And in the afternoon, uh, toward the end of the day, we're going to engage in a more intensive dialogue with families to yep. establish a formal family network that looks specifically at short-term and long-term planning supports that families need around, you know, in, in terms of their caregiving responsibilities. What would you say the biggest challenge f for Muslims with disabilities in this society? The idea, the, the issues we keep hearing around Muslims um, in the mainstream is not only are they a person with a disability, yeah. but they have the added disadvantage of possibly being a, a racialized minority mm -hmm. and of being a visible Muslim. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Islamophobia and racism and all of that mm -hmm. comes into play along with just you know, the disability piece. Mm -hmm. So they have m more layers of disadvantage. And how could we help, you know, relieve this or make it a little better? Education, education, education. And people need, you know, a little bit of help along the way with some advocacy. Mm -hmm. And, okay, what is the role of the masjid or the imams of the masjid to help with this? I honestly know, and being mm -hmm. somebody who leads the prayer, we've never talked about that topic about disability mm -hmm. and I am guilty just like every other imam who's guilty yes. of how do you deal with this topic well if it's not a personal issue they don't deal with it mm -hmm. that's that's essentially it Islam has always looked at disability as a natural aspect of being yeah. as a part of society has never labeled it anything other than mm -hmm. natural and the will of God yes um, as Muslims we you know bring our cultural mm -hmm. baggage Yes. And because of that cultural baggage, we stay away from the topic. We think it's a taboo. Mm -hmm. And many of us, if we're not personally mm -hmm. experiencing a disability mm -hmm. um, in terms of a family member or a friend, yes. direct family member, mm -hmm. we stay away from it. I mean, distant relatives stay away from it. Yeah. I, I remember, uh, you know, an incident where a blind man asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes. that if it's okay for him to pray at home, 
because you know it might be hardship to go to the masjid. Mm -hmm. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi told him, "Do you hear the azan?" He said, "Yes." He told him, "Then come to the masjid." He realized there is extra hardship, but there is more reward too, and we have to find ways to do this. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, absolutely, and and that's one of the other areas that you know one of the problems that Muslims with disabilities growing up in this society have, especially if they have hearing loss or vision loss, mm -hmm. um, or some sort of mild learning disabilities, is they're not learning about Islam. Yes, there's nothing in place to teach them. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the stories that you know touched us so much that we put in our report two years ago was mm -hmm. a brother telling us he's deaf and mm -hmm. he was telling us that. You know, he didn't learn Islam in the in a Muslim country. Yeah. He came here and he started to learn about Islam through his children mm -hmm. because they were going to the mosque and they were coming home and teaching yes. him. Mm -hmm. And he went to the mosque mm -hmm. early on Friday, sat in the front row so he could read the imam's lips mm -hmm. to understand and learn something. But yeah. they knew all kinds of stuff about Christianity yeah. because everybody's making information available to them. Mm -hmm. So us as a Muslim community should make uh, our information available to people with disabilities, regardless what the disability well, is. Well, I, I would say that it's in fact dawah. We're, yes. we're so busy wanting to convert the world, mm -hmm. to do dawah out there. And we we need forgot to, our, we forgot our, our own. own. We yes. forgot people who are raised and born and raised Muslim. We forgot about giving them the dawah. Well, thank you very much. We've run out of time. Inshallah, we talk soon about more of this. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.